Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ting. About a month ago, I bought this new MacBook Pro and 3 Pro space plate with 512 gigabyte. I've been using it over a month for almost every day. I mainly use it for software development and uh, video editing. Today, I would like to share my thoughts of this MacBook after a month and I will go into technical specification details at I'm not an expert in that area, but I would rather like share my experience as a normal end user. So is this MacBook Pro M3 Pro worth the price? Stay tuned and keep watching. The first thing I surprised the most is the webcam. As I said a little bit in my unboxing video, webcam really surprised me. MacBook webcam is 1080 pixel, FaceTime HD camera. This day we do a lot of virtual interviews, virtual meeting. That's why we need a good camera. With this MacBook Pro built-in camera, we probably don't need to invest in another like external camera. We can work well with this camera as built-in camera is pretty good. I think they even do some like processing to my skin. Sometimes my skin tone is a little bit smoother than my actual skin. So now for comparison, I want to show the MacBook Pro camera and the other camera such as Selfie E10, iPhone 11. So this is on MacBook camera and then this is on the Sony Zebi E10 camera. This is the video recording between MacBook and the iPhone 11 Zebi camera. This is the video recording between MacBook and the iPhone 11 back camera. The audio quality is pretty good as well. It's pretty loud and then it's also good quality. If you're on this mat, you won't probably need to buy an external speaker. The built-in speaker works well for me. It's comfortable to carry this mat around. It's not super heavy, but it's also not like too light. I can easily carry it in my backpack and carry it around. This day I use my MacBook on my lap a lot, and as it's not really heavy, I think it's comfortable for me. For me, I'm having a 14-inch display. I can do video editing, software development, browsing on this 14 inch display. I'm pretty comfortable for now. Uh, before I buy, I thought I had to buy an uh, external desktop, external monitor. But for now, I'm satisfied, I'm okay with that, and then I can do a lot of things for now. It's good to have one, but for now, I'm pretty okay with this 14 inch display. But if I buy 16 inch, it will probably be a little bit heavier but the screen will be bigger. Before I use this Mac, I edit my video with Adobe Premiere Pro on Windows. It's impossible to edit the video with the Premiere Pro just without using the mouse. You must have one, otherwise we will not finish editing. I never use like Mac for editing the video. That is my first time I use Mac with the Final Cut Pro to edit videos. We can get the job done without the mouse and just with the touchpad. We can cut, we can enlarge the timeline, we can apply effects and we can do a lot of things. We can color grade, etc. just with the touchpad. Uh, at first I thought I need to use external mouse to edit in the Final Cut Pro but it's even better with the touchpad. I try to use with the mouse but like enlarging the timeline and everything is better with the touchpad and not convenient with the mouse. I'm not sure if you're an advanced user, kindly let me know if you use mouse or you use touchpad when you edit video with the Final Cut Pro in Mac. But I need mouse for one case which is 3D modeling. I'm trying to learn 3D modeling with Spline and I'm trying to do it without the mouse and it's terrible. I cannot do it without the extended mouse. Uh, I need one to 3D modeling because like X, Y, and Z and the trying to spin around and then trying to like orbit control. I need the mouse, extended mouse to do. My mouse is USB Type-B. I need the USB Type-C help to connect with my Mac. Before getting into the next one, if you would like to see this kind of tips more, kindly subscribe to my channel and get notified. So far, I'm satisfied with the performance of this Mac. It should satisfy me well because it's really expensive, but nothing is perfect and there are a few things I like to mention for this Mac. 
first I found lagging twice while I was using normally such as browsing, watching YouTube videos and doing normal stuff I found lagging twice and the second thing is it's not super computer yet and it's not super 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 fresh for every case every time there are a few cases that is slowed down the slowing down that I faced was video editing in Final Cut Pro I am trying to select multiple clips on the timeline which is about 30 minutes long I'm going to do to some projects I am trying to select every clip uh, when I'm trying to do that the notebook scene like slow down for a few seconds and when I apply some effects on the timeline on every clip uh, it's not super super fast like click and then finish it's not like that it takes some time to finish processing of course it's not that crazy long or lagging but I just want you to know that it can still take some time to finish some process I used to edit video on window with Premiere Pro compared to that window and then with this Mac this Mac perform a lot better than that one by editing and exporting videos in Final Cut Pro for software development I run front end server back end server and also run some docker for like database etc it runs without any problems with that being said I didn't face the situation where the fan running so hard that my book can be running hard I didn't face that kind of situation yet for normal usage such as watching Netflix, uh, watching YouTube and text editing etc the battery really really lasts long even when I use for like software development such as I run the front end server and then some editing and sometimes I even forgot to turn off the front end server the battery seems fine and it can really last long there's one case that the video doesn't last long which is video editing when you edit video, the battery runs out really really fast if you forgot to turn off the Final Cut Pro you will see that the battery level go down really fast so other than battery on video editing, battery can last long if you want to edit outside, you probably need to bring your charger from the perspective of the storage this MacBook I bought with the 512GB SSD storage and 512GB storage is not enough for me during this one month I edit and I save videos a lot on this Mac and it maxes out pretty quick and then when you mess it out the, you cannot do anything on that Mac anymore so what I do is I delete my large Final Cut Pro project files and I have to delete them I also have to delete some of the large file videos we have a few options related to storage the first one is the configure your Mac to come with the more storage it will cost $200 more for extra 512 gigabyte and then $600 for extra 1.5 terabyte and then 1200 for more 3.5 terabyte it's not cheap it comes with the more space and option number two is to buy a portable external hard drive and it's cheaper compared to like configuring our Mac but we had to carry it around so option three that we can consider is buying a cloud plus that we can buy from one dollar to sixty dollar a month within the storage so but for this option we have to have the stable internet every time we want to access in conclusion I'm satisfied with this product it's really convenient and it's really what I want to use except the storage now I probably have to consider the SNR storage on iCloud Plus alright this is my MacBook Pro M3 Pro Space Black 512GB memory review let me know what's your talk on this MacBook in the comment section I would like to hear it that's all for my today video I hope this video is useful and if it's useful please like subscribe and share my video and see you in the next video bye bye